Hello. In my previous video, I attempted to fix a Zoom R16 uh, recorder, and I was not successful. And in particular, in the process, this uh, power supply was found to be faulty, and perhaps uh, fried the unit at some point in the past. So let's have a closer look at this power supply. And just a quick check to see what's going on. I showed this in the previous video already, that the output is pulsing as if the power supply is trying to start up, but then shuts down and the process repeats over and over again. Here is a better view of this pulsing on the scope. We have two volts per division vertically, and I have seen pulses as high as almost 10 volts. This one is about 8 or oh, Here it is, about 10 volts spike. And uh, horizontally we have 500 milliseconds per division, so two divisions is one second. And we have about 1.7 uh, seconds between the pulses. It's time to crack this power supply open and have a look inside. I managed to open this thing without damaging the electronics, I hope. And it turns out it was not welded, but there are latches, two on each side, and two here, but not on this side. And there are hooks on the cover. So it could be opened easily and with no damage at all, but I did not know that and forced my way in and broke these two latches. Not a big deal. Uh, let me take the board out of the case and we will have a closer look at it. Here it is, and by the way, the model marked on the case is LTE05W-S1, and it is also marked on the board, but with dash S0 at the end, for some reason. Revision is RD, 2006-06-28. This does not look bad at all. Here is a fuse, uh, an isolation slot between the pins, nice distance between the primary side and the secondary side, another tiny isolation slot under this capacitor, which is between the primary and the secondary, an opta isolator there, uh, some sort of a power transistor under this capacitor, Probably a little bit too close to each other, uh, but this whole thing is crammed into a tiny case uh, with no ventilation anyway, so there is not much of a difference where to put the capacitor, I would think. This must be the main controller chip. Uh, there is a bridge rectifier here next to the fuse. Nice piece of insulation between the transformer and the secondary side. Uh, this is probably a voltage reference. I would guess a classic uh, 431 or something like that. Looks quite good. Slightly closer look at some components. The main MOSFET is uh, 2N60. All capacitors are branded uh, TPO. I don't know this brand. All of them are rated 105 degrees, which is very good. This one is uh, 10 microfarad, 400 volts. And yes, the reference is 431. Not sure if it is visible on camera. I'm trying to catch the right angle. A 
Let's try to understand what's going on here. Not that I care too much to fix this thing, but just for the fun of it and for education. Based on the pulsing output, my guess is that the primary side is ok, otherwise we most probably would have nothing at all. There is a chance that I am wrong here, but for now let's assume that uh, the problem is on the secondary side. I traced the schematic of the secondary side here and uh, maybe I'm wrong in some details, but for the most part it should be ok. Let's uh, have a look, it is a classic design, nothing too complicated. We get AC from the transformer, it is rectified through this diode. Here we have electrolytic cap for filtering, some more filtering here, a bleeding resistor to discharge the capacitor, a Zener diode for over voltage protection, more filtering through this coil and this um, electrolytic cap on the output, and uh, this voltage divider on the output to bias this Zener based voltage reference. Uh, there is uh, some more filtering here on the reference and through this um, current limiting resistor uh, there is opto-isolated feedback to the primary side. So my guess is that uh, something is wrong with the voltage reference or opto-isolator because these are two critical components of the feedback loop. And look at this. I am checking here across the Zener based reference anode to cathode. And 5 ohms. And here is the optocoupler. 8.5 ohms. And if we swap the probes, uh, just in case, to check both ways, we get the same thing. So something is nearly shorted around here, and um, it's hard to tell what exactly, probably the reference. So let's desolder the reference and have a look. Here I desoldered the reference, and sure enough, 5 ohms across anode and cathode. And we still have around 8 ohms across the optocoupler. So something is shorted here as well, perhaps the optocoupler itself. And this side of the optocoupler must be two back-to-back -back infrared LEDs. So it should not be 8 ohms. So let's desolder the optocoupler. Alright, <laughs> desoldered and I needed to cut out some gunk around it. And sure enough, 8 ohms across it. No more shorts here, so let's put the replacement parts in. The optocoupler is marked 817. So here I found a sharp PC817, which I salvaged from one of the old boards I have in my junk bin. And here I have an UTL431. Here we are, the replacement parts are installed, and I did not turn this on yet. And I'm using this scope meter because uh, this alligator clip can nicely grab around the connector. So let's see if it blows up. Oh, there you go, 5 volts. This Zener diode is here for over voltage protection. It is supposed to limit the output voltage to slightly above 5 volts, let's say 5.6 is a typical value in such cases. 
and it should last just long enough before the fuse blows. But we have seen spikes to 10 volts on the scope, so I thought that Zener must be dead. I desoldered it from the board, and by the way, it is marked here DZ1 on the board, so there is no mistake, it is a Zener. This rectifier diode is marked D1. So here it is, a small surface mount part. I soldered these two wires to it, just to easily demonstrate that it is indeed dead. Uh, here we have a diode testing mode, and uh, it is uh, forward biased, so we should see a typical diode drop here, about uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 volts. For comparison, here I found a 5.6 volt Zener. Let's forward bias this guy. And there you go, just a regular diode drop. So why this Zener failed before the fuse? Perhaps it is too small for the job, or maybe the fuse is too slow, or maybe there was a gigantic surge on the input, and there is no protection against that in this supply. A replacement 5.6 volt Zener is installed. It looks a bit beefier than the old one. The supply is back together, in a slightly damaged case. I hope this investigation was interesting and educational. In particular, how a slightly beefier Zener, or perhaps a slightly faster fuse, or maybe an additional surge protection on the input, like a varistor or something like that, which is worth a few cents, might have saved an expensive piece of equipment. If you like this video, give it thumbs up. It helps. Thank you very much. Bye.